Hi, I'm uh, Jeff Johnson with Geometrics, and today we're working with Mr. Malik here at a test patch in San Jose, California, uh, where we've laid out a small grid, a rectangular grid that's 10 meters on a side, and we've marked the ground with surveying paint to establish a 2 meter grid. This is a, a small but not an atypical survey layout if one were searching for, for example, UXO, large, deeply buried UXO. The scenario would be that there would be a point of impact and our objective would be to locate the most probable location of the object relative to that point of impact. After impact, the projectile may travel many, many meters. Mr. Malik could uh, enlighten us on, on what could be expected there, depending upon the soil conditions. Uh, so we want to grid and search an area that's centered on the point of impact in a wide enough extent to be assured that we would be acquiring enough data to locate the object. Today's training exercise is limited in its scope, just for the purposes of efficiency and, uh, and to complete our training exercise. We have uh, suited Mr. Malik up with the magnetometer, the G858 backpack model. The console is connected to the battery and to the cesium vapor sensor. So at this point we can press the main power button to momentarily to power the console up. It automatically boots in what's termed magnetometer mode and at this point the sensor is receiving power and it's going through its warm-up cycle. We can observe that warm-up cycle by entering into the 858's menuing system and since we're in magnetometer mode simply by pressing enter we bring up the next menu and if we scroll down to survey setup, or pardon me, system setup, all the way to the bottom, and press enter again, we can observe the uh, magnetometer's performance by scrolling down this tertiary menu into magnetometer test. Go Pressing ahead. enter on magnetometer test will bring up a display, a thermometer type display that shows the uh, current system system operating parameters including the battery voltage of the main battery pack, the internal lithium keep alive battery and the sensor performance. You'll note here that we have the uh, sensor performance broken into uh, two, two groups for sensor 1 and sensor 2 Right now we're only running a single sensor and the system is in the process of warming, warming up. We're connected to signal 1 and if you look down, or system 1, you'll see that signal 1 is increasing. When we get up to on the order of 30 to 50 percent of the signal strength, we should be receiving magnetometer data. Under normal temperature conditions we recommend a period of about five minutes of warm-up to make sure that the sensor uh, circuits have stabilized with regard to their their thermal performance and thermal cycling. Okay, Mr. Malik has uh, gone through the system checkout on the G858 console and has also constructed in the file menuing uh, system in the 858 console a survey file with a survey grid. He's going to be moving up one line and down the adjacent survey line while he presses the mark keys on the console to enter position information into his data file. So he's going to be recording both magnetic field data and the sequence of mark and end of line keys, all of which will be time stamped so that they can, in uh, post processing, be positioned into a measurement versus position file. 
It's important to remember that we're recording data as a function of time, and it's going to be later converted into a function of position. So he starts by pressing the green button, the mark button, and each time the sensor is positioned over his next mark on the ground, he presses mark again. And at the last mark, he presses the end of line button. The sensor should be held as steady as possible, and for this survey area, it should be held in a, in a vertical orientation. So here we are on line two, and Mr. Malik, the operator, is going to be heading down survey grid. This is a bi-directional survey. That means you walk in opposite directions on alternate lines. Repeating the process from the prior line, he presses the green button, the mark button, to begin the requiring da acquiring data. And that starts as soon as the sensor crosses the mark position and presses the end of line when he reaches the terminal position. The magnetometer is set to sample at 10 times per second, so he'll have a very dense data set at a, at a walking pace that will probably provide measurement points on positions that are just a few centimeters apart. We have a target object, which is a which is a, a rare earth magnet, which generates a rather strong magnetic field, and it'll serve as a target for our uh, data processing and analysis, which we'll do after we download the data from the magnetometer. At this point in the survey, it's Im it's important not to focus so much on what you're looking for, but on on the actual data acquisition, that is to maintain a steady speed over the ground and try and maintain a constant heading. This survey patch is uh, rather ideal. It's flat and it's open. In other situations you might find uh, obstructions or uneven terrain. Even and in these situations uh, the G8 5.8 backpack has a GPS sensor on it which will be an auxiliary data positioning uh, mechanism. After completing the single sensor survey we're going to be configuring the magnetometer with two sensors to make what's termed a transverse radiometer array. The procedure is identical to what you've just seen however with the transverse radiometer you get double the data density, that is spatially, and this gives you better uh, accuracy in, in locating and positioning small targets.